I am slightly angry. I don't, I, I don't, I don't know. Can you tell? Let's talk. Tascam DR70. Beautiful field recorder. My idea was I have amazing interview opportunities at Warwick Base Camp. And we're talking about Steve Bailey, Lee Sklar, Stu Ham, John B. Williams, um, Phil motherfucking X. What's going on here? Um, sorry. This is, this is Paul from, you know, who was my camera guy who was as pissed off about this as I am. Um, Phil X, uh, Devin Townsend, 90 minute Devin Townsend interview, holy crap! So, I thought, I don't want to depend on a laptop. Because drivers are faulty, things happen, mobile stuff. So I have this, and I thought, let's not depend on it! I want something really dependable in the box! I didn't want to drag around an audio interface, all of this. Instead, I dragged around a whole rack of things to compensate for the crapola that the Tascam is. I don't, I don't know what I was thinking. So, I got this a few weeks ago. And, oh, well, let's, let's, look at the, let's look at the features of the Tascam DS70. This is a review, so, bing! Let's look at the features of the Tascam DS70. I'm sorry, I'm... I'm a, li I'm a little bit emotional here. I I'm getting all verklempt. Talk amongst yourselves. I'll give you a topic. Tascam sucks, but, you know, not big ass, but, but little ones. I, I don't know. Actually, you know, Tascam as a company, I'm sorry. Tascam as a company doesn't suck. I called them three times. The guys on the phone were super cool. They weren't like all defensive. No, it's good. Me, 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 me. They were super helpful. I gotta say, I've talked to companies that get immediately defensive when you say, excuse me, your, 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 your product doesn't do what it's supposed to do and it's, it's letting me down. And then I talked to the boss of the tech, whatever, here in Germany. And he was super cool. He said, you know what, if I, I'm not going to name any names. You know who you are. He said, if I was in your situation and this would have happened to me, I would have been, I would be as pissed off as you are right now. So... If you want to make this video and say it's bad, I'd, I'd rather you didn't, but if this is what happened, I can't stop you. So, Tascam as a company, not sucking, this does. So let's look at the features. This is pretty cool because it mounts on a tripod right here. And then you can actually screw the camera in, so it's all like one thing. Um, I've even seen people put it on their uh, SLR, DSLR, digital SLR. Spiegel Reflex Camera in German. Um, on top, I don't think I would trust it on top. I, I, I would feel that the camera, would, the, 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 the uh, flash shoe would break off. It's a little bit on the heavy side. But in any way, you can do either or. Um, so, you have one, two, three, four XLR inputs. TRS tippering sleeve in the middle so you can go in with a uh, line cable if you wanted to, which is something we, something we did. It's got a camera out, so anything this thing records can go directly into the camera's audio, which is pretty damn cool. A camera in, so you can actually monitor what your camera is recording itself. It's got an external in, like an aux in, if you wanted to email. If you wanted to um, record, let's say, an iPod audio track with it, feed that to a bass player who's jamming along. It's, the possibilities are very cool. Headphone out, USB in for power, which is cool, but doesn't make it so mobile. And I found out that you can power it with a USB. I was a total, I was an idiot about this, not Tascam. I found out in, while talking to the guy from Tascam, he said, you can power it with USB. Obviously at this point, I didn't have the kind of flat USB cable that came with it. I didn't bring this, I brought, a car full of shit and not that USB cable. So we powered it with batteries, which we'll get into. So here's what happened. It's pretty damn cool. In theory. Phantom power on all channels. Right now it's asking me, do you want to turn phantom power on? Because once it was off, it doesn't automatically put the phantom power on the, on the track, on the outputs, because that's a safety feature. Totally cool. So I say, yes, phantom power back on. We have four tracks here, which you level with manual knobs, which is cool. You don't level it in a menu. You have a continuous knob for menu control and a menu button. You can push the continuous knob. Menu control is pretty good. And you have a lot of options. You can say one and two, three and four, please make them stereo or all mono. You can say uh, it has two built-in mics. 
So you can say track number four, built in mic, track number three, uh, guitar mic in theory. Uh, track number one, this mic, track number two, the other mic, uh, phantom power, no phantom power, line, uh, everything is possible. Very cool, low cut, limiter, um, limiter making sure that you're not clipping, which the first video I recorded with this, I'm clipping like crazy. Here's the thing, we played around with it last week and I've done a couple of videos. Look at my pedal train video, look at the My Two Cents section on the Carl Martin demos, uh, the um, creative pedal board velcroing video I did, all recorded with this because it's cool for me. I just put it on the table, plug in my mic, record on the built-in SD card, uh, built-in, on the SD card and I don't have to set up my mic, my mic preamps, turn on Cubase. If I want to do a quick video like this one, I can rely on this. Well, obviously right now I'm not relying on this. I'm talking into the directional mic that's on top of the camera. Here, there's a little door that at some point will most certainly break off because it's a little plasticky thing, but... Okay. By the way, it's about 300 bucks, which is very affordable for the features it offers if they fucking work! I'm getting a little bit emotional here. So, SD card goes right here, and then here is a very sturdy metal door for your batteries, four of them. I never know double, triple, quadruple, six, single A, what is it, double A, okay? So, first thing, when the batteries go down, and they go down not after six hours like they're supposed to, they go down really fast. So you do a one hour video, uh, one hour interview, maybe one hour and a half, battery's dead or at least so dead that you don't trust them to last another interview. We went through 40 batteries. 40. But this is the second one, by the way, because the noise was so much when I recorded here, when I tried, the, the hissing behind my talking in my lav mic, okay? was so loud that I spent a hundred bucks extra on Waves Z-Noise to reduce the noise. If you listen to my pedal train overview, go back a couple of videos, pedal train overview. Um, the noise you hear is what's left after the hundred euro plugin from Waves did its job. You don't want to hear it before it, it did its thing. So, Paul came and we went through the whole setup for the Warwick week, the Wawi Way, Wawi Way, Warwick week. Um, and he's like, dude, that, that can't be. It cannot possibly be this loud in noise. And then he took them all down. We took them all down. We took them all down. We, we had no input coming, nothing plugged in, all the preamps down. We recorded four tracks with nothing coming in all down. And there was quite a bit of noise. So talking to Tascam, they said minus 90 dB is absolutely uh, acceptable. It's freaking noise. And I'm compressing vocals. Once I'm talking, I'm, I'm compressing. It brings up, it's, it's, for my purposes, completely unacceptable. So that's step number one. They sent me another one. I sent it back to Toman. They were totally nice. Sent one to me. Same bullshit. And I said, you know what? Too late to do anything else. I'm using it. I'm just going to have some noise. I'm using gating, whatever I could possibly do. That would have been cool, okay. Dependable one thing. I also ordered a 300 euro art preamp, ART. Just hoping that the preamp, that those two preamp, 200 bucks, uh, 300 bucks for two preamps. I was hoping that this would make me able to get these down as far as possible to reduce the noise from the preamps and have the art take over. I also ordered a 600 euro Sennheiser wireless with the lav mic, okay, clip on. For the artists, I was going to use mine with a cable, with a, which is an AKG cable, a little bit more dependable apparently. So here's what happened. All the channels running, we have a mic on the amp in number three, we have the Sennheiser on Devin Townsend, 90 minute Devin Townsend interview, 90 minute Devin Townsend interview with him opening up emotionally, then getting me out of my little cubby hole and, and having me admit things to you viewers that, that I never talked to about anyone. Devin Townsend, complete stranger to me, got me to like really go into what it's like to be a musician and my in insecurities. Mind blown. Check out what it sounds like.
Cool, huh? Cool. Did you get what he just said? No, you fucking didn't! You fucking didn't what he just said! Sorry. No, you did not get what Devin Townsend fucking just said. So here's the deal. Oh, I just turned off. Okay, fine then. I'm gonna turn it on again. Come on. Come on! Phantom Power, yes. So I'm gonna basic track number one on. So right now I'm gonna show you what it looks like when all the tracks are on. It's very easy to see. All four tracks are black. Very clearly black. Okay? So I'm gonna show you what it would look like if only track one is armed. I'm gonna do this, okay? I'm gonna see what order. We're gonna go to menu, basic, track number two, off. Track number three, off. Track number four, off. Menu. So it's just, there's a very clear visual feedback because they're all off. There's no black, that's just the number, and only track number one is on. Okay? Pretty, pretty clear. They were all on. We checked this thing after it fucked up so many times. We checked this thing several, 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 several times. During the interview, in f before the interview, we get the SD card out, put it in the Mac. You know what showed up? Track number one. We have track number one, which we, because there were other fuck ups on track number one, due to the Sennheiser, not the Tascam, we didn't use that anymore. We only had two, three, and four. So all they recorded was track number one. I got nothing. 90 minute Devin Townsend interview. I have the room mic on the camera. And if you know me, I hate using room mics. Listening to a 90 minute interview of Devin Townsend with the room reverberary, reverberating is extremely unprofessional. And I'm very, very sorry. I apologize to all of you that want to see this interview. It's gonna be a little bit difficult to dig into it. So I'm sorry, it's my fault for trusting this. So we got it from Toman version number two, the second one with operating system 1.02. You see, I mean, if I get something like this, I don't, my first thing that I think about is let's go, you know, I have other shit to do because I'm leaving in two days because this is already you now coming in last minute. Let's go and update the firmware. I'm not this guy who thinks like that because it's a standalone unit. It's not a fucking computer running Windows Vista and this is about how good this is. Let's update the operating system. No. So after it messing up in a way that I'm going to explain in a sec, uh, I call Task and he's like, oh, you got 1.02. The newest one is 1.11. So, 02 and 11. So, I don't know how long this has been sitting at Toman, which ob obviously is m not Tascam's fault, but shouldn't it come with a warning? Sm uh, um, please, Tascam, please. The least you can do. I, I got Rex Brown's email here. So, put a sticker on the fucking thing in yellow, blinking or something that when I take it out of the box, it says, make sure you have the newest firmware for idiots like me who think that things work when you take them out of the box. It was unworkable when you, I took it out of the box. It fucked up. Put a sticker on it. Please go to tascam.eu motherfucker and install the newest firmware. Okay? So, as I said, the guys from Tascam were super nice. They were super nice, um, but this is important. So here's what happened. Well, let's listen to the close mic Sennheiser E609 mic with a high-end cable running into this in front of the amp while Phil X is playing. Phil motherfucking X is playing for me right there in the interview. And let's listen to the close mic amp.
How close, Mike, did that sound? Well, it didn't. And you know what? what? You, were, you, were, you wanna know what you just heard? You heard the track that was recorded, pushed up in Final Cut, 12 dB, then you still couldn't hear it. Then I'm using and whatever comp mastering compressor to push it up even more with the gain, again another 12 dB, so it's even as loud as you can hear it now. So here's what happened. Let's go into it! Number three. We had the mic plugged into number three. No Fender power necessary, it's a dynamic mic, okay? I know they're quiet. So, plugged into here. We level it. I play guitar. Fine. Well, if I play guitar, it could still be the room mic or something. You know, picking up. So, what do you do as an audio professional? I studied sound design and recording at Berklee College of Music. I have a summa cum laude. I'm not bragging here. I've got a four point fucking whatever average. Actually, 3.94. That was my average, not a 4.0. 3.94, summa cum laude with highest honors. I know what the fuck I'm doing, okay? I'm not just some idiot. See, I, I, I have the fucking t-shirt. See? Well, this is contemporary writing, but I have one that says, you know, electronic engineering and design. I'm not just some bumfuck hobo off the street who goes like, eh, on. And Powell, my guy behind the camera, he possibly knows more about the stuff than I do. So please, don't go into two people with a lot of knowledge about audio engineering and parameters fucked up. Please don't go there. Really. So, we go, plug in the mic, we tap on the mic. Doc, 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 doc. Sounds like this. So it's a very, very, very clear indicator that the mic is actually what's going in. And you see, tok, 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 on the level meter. You level it out, then you play guitar, you level it out. You very, very, very clear have a feedback that the mic is the one that is going in. You shouldn't have to quadruple check, but we did because we didn't trust it. So, one hour Phil X, mind blown. I'm like, holy crap, that was so fucking cool. Let's listen to the track. It recorded the built-in mic number three. Even with the newest software on it. Oh, hell yeah, that's great, huh? Hell yeah. We found out why. In between one of the interviews, it recorded the mic, and then it didn't. So if on all tracks you set up mono, which means individual, nothing is grouped together, which could be a mistake you could be making. And uh, we made sure they're all on mono. So if that happens, and number four is set to the internal mic, which we wanted to do as a backup, just have one more mic running instead of recording an empty track. It was a good idea, record as many things as you can in case things fuck up. If number four is on mic, and number three is set to TRS, XLR slash TRS, which means this motherfucking thing, then, It still records this mic. Hey, number four is on mic. He must have made a mistake. And he actually means to record the other mic as well. I mean, why would he possibly want to record the close mic amp that is showing up in the display as the very email as the very clear input? Plug it in, level it out, input here, what it's recording is something different. It's like I'm pointing my camera this way, but what I'm gonna see is this. What if your video, video, to, video, gra, videographer, video, videographer, video man, and you've got a freaking interview with the president of the fucking United States, and you're like pointing your camera at it, but you come home and all you see is the fireplace. Wouldn't you call the company and say, hey guys, you owe me shit. I'm sorry, you know? Please make a statement. And I gotta say, the statement from Tascam was not in my face like, oh, you fucking, you, you did stuff wrong, you set it up wrong. They, he was very nice, okay? He said, I would understand, I would, I, I would appreciate it if you didn't make this video. Obviously, I, as a company, I would say the same thing, but I have to, you know me. I'm honest about the stuff I use. I usually don't do audio equipment, but this needs to be said. And uh, I'm giving Tascam a chance to say, hey, 
Sorry. Maybe they have a piece of gear that works. I'm, I'm here, I'm open. My first four track, I just wrote an email to them. My first four track on cassette, I don't know if you guys know what cassette is, okay? <coughs> there are these things with these long strings inside that do magnetic stuff. My first four, ta four track was a task that my parents brought me from their world tour, world trip that they did for their 25th anniversary and they went to Hong Kong and they brought me this thing. And the reason why I'm here partially is because I started recording with it and became, I wanted to be a producer because I had this. So, Thank you, Tascam, for this piece of gear that I don't know what happened to it. Maybe I sold it. I don't remember. Um, this four track wrecked one of the biggest chances I have. Um, but I got to say, 600 euro Sennheiser. I wanted to give the really good mic to the artists, to the celebrities I had there. So I'm taking this, I'm clipping it on. I have the good Sennheiser mic, 600 bucks. It is brand fucking spanking new, okay? Sorry for all the fuck, but you can clearly say, see that I'm emotional about this. So this is three days old, okay? I got this on the tracks. Yeah, and then it was with Megadeth. Uh, Megadeth and Dave Mustaine. Goes on for about an hour. Because this little thing here, broken. Brand new mic. Treated beautifully. It didn't come with a little pouch or anything to put it in. So I took a box from a pedal and put it in so it's absolutely safe. I treat my stuff well. This wasn't like thrown around, people stepped on it. Dave Ellison almost stepped on it when he, when he put it on. I'm like, oh my God, oh my God. But he stepped right next to it. It was treated with the highest care. Fuck shit! So, the direct mics on the artist, I have, I think, Steve Bailey, Lee Sklar, maybe Stu Ham. Then it started fucking up. Um, but that's not Tascam's fault, that's Sennheiser's fault. So, sorry, Sennheiser. You guys suck too, at least this product, okay? Paul said they are super dependent, that this is very nice and metal. It's very cool. But, this was my chance, guys. This was, uh, Hans Peter Wilfer gave me this chance. Oh, let's go into something else here. So, Rhonda Smith. I wanted to get Rhonda Smith to ask her about, you know, pancakes. Because, of course, that's what you talk to Rhonda Smith about. Because, you know, I'm fucked up in the head, so I don't want to know about bass. I wanted to know about Princess Pancakes. And we have that interview. We have it. Later. So, I finally grabbed her. She finally had a minute. And then Hans Peter Wilfer comes up. The boss of Warwick, okay? He's like, hey, Rana, I wanted to give you a private factory tour. And we've been waiting for a factory tour. I didn't want to, you know, be too buggy and really get on the nerves. And, and uh, Markus Spangler, the, the guitar head of production, he wanted to give us a factory tour, but there was never, like, we always crossed paths. So I'm there. I'm like, I want to talk to Rhonda, and she's getting a factory tour. So he's, he's like, hey, Rhonda, you can talk to Henning or do a factory tour with me. It's really, you know, come on. What's the choice? Of course, talking to me. No. And I said, hey, Hans Peter, can I get a, can we maybe tag along with our cameras? And he looks at me in the eye and goes, no. Of course you can, of course you can. What a cool guy. So, we do a one, a two hour factory tour with three cameras. And to moderate this kind of on the side, I clip on my mic with the cable. This is a mobile recorder, so it works mobile. So I put a, a climbing hook through here, put it on my belt. Just carrying it around. Because I didn't want the directional mic that was on Hans Peter. Hopefully it recorded something, I don't know. I'll see. So, it recorded all four tracks. Yay! Awesome. Um, it recorded 1.38 seconds of all four tracks. Now I'm gonna go, this could be that I accidentally hit the record button again. But after 1.38 seconds, I mean, I go click. Check, 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 check. I don't touch it after this. I mean, I... I'm not that stupid. And even if it has a hold button, so I'm, I was a complete idiot for not using the hold button. This could be operating person's fault. It could be. I'm not saying Tascam is this fucked up. But oh, ta not Tascam. The product. This product. Not Tascam. Okay? Not saying that. Um... I owe them my career in recording, okay? 
So uh, what, what I'm saying is you click it and then you put it back here. That takes more than 1.38 seconds. So what happened in the time I turned it on, went back here. Fact is I carried this thing around with me for two hours, heavy clicking and, and, and 1.38 seconds on four tracks. Awesome. Batteries, I told you, are supposed to last for six hours. They really don't. They absolutely didn't. 40 batteries went through. I don't know what else to say. I probably missed some things. We did, of course, install while at Warwick. We got the laptop, went into an area where we had a hotspot because in our room we didn't. It was horrible in it. <coughs> and um, we went, and oh, now the battery goes down again just by it being on. It was on half. Now we are on a quarter. Just because it was on for this time. Do you see it running? Do you see the mic preamps going? Do you see it? This is bullshit, people. Okay, so we installed the new firmware, which messed up. Oh, frequently it just said, please reboot, total software error. You had to reboot the whole thing. Windows Vista, or what, Millennium? 95? 95 worked, so Millennium or Vista. That's what is running on this. And, um, I don't know what else to say. I'm gonna make the best out of the tracks I have. I sincerely apologize to all of you who wanted the quality that I usually provide in terms of audio. I hope you still enjoy the, the videos. I hope you have a blast. I had a blast. I wanna thank Hans-Peter Wilfer. I wanna thank Tascam for being, you know, cool about it, but let's see how they react. This, this is, I'm sorry, don't buy this. Bye.